Welcome back to another video. I am Mike Builds. Today we have a very large battery to take a look at. So this is the brand new EG4 16 kilowatt hour, 314 amp hour, 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, indoor battery I should say. These things actually just came out. Well, they've actually been out for a little bit now, but I haven't seen a ton of people get their hands on one of these. And I think they just started shipping really not too long ago. And I'm happy to say I finally got one. I've been looking at the EG4 indoor batteries now for a while, but I never wanted to pull the trigger on one until they had their Black Friday sale. And I said, why not? And I'm very glad I did wait because I was able to get the 314 amp hour version instead of the 280 amp hour version. And I'm sure the 280 amp hour version is fine, but I would rather get a little bit more capacity, you know, for probably almost the same size battery. The reason why we're in my garage is because this thing is in a crate and it weighs close to 300 pounds. So we're going to uncrate it. I'm going to attempt to put it on a little hand truck and get it in the house and we can take a better look at it. I ordered this from Signature Solar when it ships. They're going to ship it on a pallet. I actually had some other things in my order as well. That's why there's a mess, but I'm going to show you guys those other things in a future video. This video is just going to be mainly focused on the indoor battery. Dang, this thing is nice. What a beast of a battery. Check this thing out. It's amazing, it's beautiful. Got the little feet right here, that way you don't have to wall mount it. These are gonna be how you lift it and move it around, which I'm not gonna be able to do by myself. And they also test all their batteries, so you get a little quality control sheet. It tells you all the information about the testing of the battery. Get a nice little logo, status lights right there. It also gonna come with a bunch of cables and stuff as well. I'm gonna show you guys all this once I get it actually out of the crate and in the house. Oh, okay. I just gotta be able to maybe, got my dolly right here. If we can get it on this thing, I think we'll be good. Question is, how do we do that? I'm gonna blow out this into the crate. I'm just gonna walk the battery toward me and hope I can just like set it down on the pallet, set it down on the hand truck. And that's my plan. All right, we're gonna do the battery walk. There we go. Now we got a little bit of safety. Oh, we got this too. Oh, we're in. We're freaking in, boys. Oh, yeah. All right. We did this completely alone and no one got hurt or broken. Very happy about that. All right. Well, we got the battery, so let's do this. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this new EG4 314 amp hour indoor wall mount battery by EG4. This is their latest flagship battery that they just came out with. 314 amp hours, 51.2 volt. That's over 16 kilowatt hours of capacity. That is a lot for just one battery. The battery is rated at 200 amps continuous with a peak power output of 12.8 kilowatts. So it'll be able to start really large loads. It has built-in heaters as well as dual fire suppressors. It has their latest third generation BMS with closed loop communication features as well as a smart communication feature to where you don't actually have to set dip switches. You can connect it straight to your inverter or straight to other batteries. Automatically, you're gonna configure its own address in order to work with the inverter. You don't actually have to use EG4 inverters with these batteries. A lot of people think that. You can actually use this with many different inverters on the market and the communication features will still work just fine. It has RS-485 and CAN protocol. The battery itself weighs 290 pounds. It comes with a 10 year warranty and they rate it at 10,000 cycles. So this battery right here, it's around 3,700 to $4,000 depending on when you buy it. If you buy it on sale, you can sometimes find it even less than that. It's also UL listed. If you use this along with an EG4 inverter with the correct box and the cabling and everything, it'll allow your entire setup to be UL listed. And in some areas of the country, that's actually a requirement if you're gonna do a full grid tied setup. Some people need the UL listing, some people it doesn't really matter, but it is nice that it is listed. All right, now I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around of the battery and show you guys some more of the features up close. Okay, so on the front right here, we have our EG4 nicely machined aluminum logo. These are gonna be all your status lights. There is no more screen like on a 280 amp hour pack. Personally, I do like the screen. However, I do see why they went without the screen. It does cut down on cost. And a lot of people who are installing these batteries, you're gonna kind of install it and forget it. So the screen isn't really necessary, I think for most people, but I would have liked to have it. You get an alarm LED, a run LED, as well as some status LEDs. These are gonna give you a rough idea how much capacity is left in the battery. Right here, you're gonna have your main power button right here that's gonna turn on off the BMS. So if we click that on, it's kind of hard to see, but the LEDs right here all light up. And then you also have a built-in 250 amp breaker. You go ahead and flip that guy on and then you can shut this little lid, secure it with these little symbols right there. So now the battery is on. Here's a quick look of the technical label on the side of the battery. So it gives you all the specs right here. Here we are on the other side of the battery. Also, there is built-in handles on either side. So that makes lifting it a little bit nicer. 
you have a connection for an antenna right here and it says Wi-Fi. What's weird is when I looked through the manual, I couldn't find anything referencing Wi-Fi. The BMS does have Bluetooth, so you can wirelessly connect to it with your phone and I will show you guys that as well. Here's what the back of the unit looks like. You get these nice thick ropes to kind of help you maneuver and move the battery around. It makes it a little bit extra safer and a little bit easier. And then the wall bracket is already mounted to the battery. So if you want to mount this to the wall, you simply remove the bolt here, 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 and here. The bracket will come loose. You can mount this up. After the bracket's fully installed on the wall, you can lift it up, hang it on the bracket, and it will be fully wall mounted. So I like that they just slapped the bracket on there because a lot of people, including myself, I'm actually not gonna mount this to my wall. And if you don't wanna mount the battery to the wall, you don't have to because you do get these little adjustable feet and they are adjustable. So it'll allow you to set the battery on whatever hard surface you want. Using the little jam nuts, you can actually adjust the height and the level of the battery, making it very safe. And you do wanna make sure this thing's level because it's so heavy. Moving on to the top, we have our built-in 600 amp bus bars. So you have Amphenol connectors here and here for your positive and negative. And then you also have a standard ring terminal style connector here. So if you wanna just use a standard ring terminal style connector, you can very easily do that without having to buy the Amphenol connectors. But the Amphenol connectors do make it very easy to make your connections. You just click it right on there and you have a safe, sealed, reliable connection. Those are gonna be all your COM ports for all your communication features. And then there is a dry contact switch right there. So pretty nice, a lot of connections. And they also do sell a box that you can put on top of this to go between the battery and the inverter to make a very clean, very seamless connection possible and you don't have to see any wires at all. And real quick before I forget, I did reread through the manual and the spec sheet on the battery. Apparently if you have the antenna on here, you can actually do over the air updates to the BMS. And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but the BMS has active balancing that's starting to become a more standard feature. In the past, most BMS is passively balanced using a resistor to bleed off the highest cells. But now with these modern BMSs, even in the cheaper batteries, it'll actively balance the lowest cells and it'll keep the battery more balanced. So you'll get better cycling life out of the battery. The more balanced you keep the cells, the better performance you will get out of the battery overall. So that's awesome that they're now doing that. Now along with the battery itself, here's everything else that you get in the packaging. So you actually get two sets of two aux gauge cables with Amphenol connectors on there. All you have to do is put whatever end you want. So I'm more than likely gonna put some ring terminals on there just to make this easier to use for my setup. So two sets of leads, that's awesome. A bag of mounting hardware with wall anchors. I think you can stick these in the wall. That'll allow you to bolt the plate to it. And then you also get some lifting eyelets. I would assume this will screw somewhere and allow you to use a sling or maybe like an engine hoist to actually pick the battery up. And these will screw in on the side. So someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can pull out this big bolt right here. Screw your little eyelets in there and it'll make lifting the battery up with a sling a lot easier. You get one ethernet cable for a communication setup. You get the little Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna deal with a little magnetic base. So you connect this to the battery, stick this to the top or to the side or whatever. That way you have better range on that. And then you get the terminals for your dry contact. Now this could be triggered to start a generator to set up different alarm setups. You can do a lot of different things with these dry contacts. I don't really see a ton of people messing with that feature. If it is something you're interested in controlling like a generator or anything, that's what you'd use to do that with. And then you also get this little terminating like ethernet looking plug. Not really sure what that is to be honest and then you also get some additional metal brackets right here these look like they might be straps of some sort to help secure the battery so that's kind of a good brief overview of the battery now i actually want to open up the battery and take a look on the inside to see how the build quality is i'm expecting nothing but greatness due to the fact that this is probably one of the best batteries you can buy for the money this is not a budget battery this is a battery you buy when you want reliable power when you want to just plug and play your setup have a good warranty and money's not really an object this is a very expensive battery but just for you guys, I'm gonna open this thing up so we can take a look on the inside. I do not recommend you guys open your batteries up. In fact, I'm probably voiding my warranty doing this, but I'm willing to do it just for you guys. And that just shows you how much I trust in the EG4 product. All right, here we go. Here's a first look. I've never seen inside one of these batteries. If anyone else has taken one apart on YouTube, I haven't watched the video yet. I'm gonna be real careful because the display on the front, go ahead and unplug that guy. There's what the front of the case looks like. That's just going to be the circuit board for your little display, as you guys see. And it also has the EG4 little label right there. And then this should be where the BMS and everything's at. I'll get you guys a real up-close shot of what's going on here. Nice slow panning shot. So y'all can get a lot of detail and see what's going on in this battery. I am going to take the little covers off so you guys can look at the cells a little better. So there's a look at the BMS there on the bottom. It actually has like a metal bracket that kind of encompasses the BMS. Look at these large connectors they use. I guess that's how they connect the actual pack. So these actually come straight out of the negative terminals of the battery. You have a plug here going into the BMS. Then you have the wires coming out of the BMS going to this plug and that's what's gonna go to your main negative bus bar. The bus bars are absolutely massive. They are rated at 600 amps. So yeah, those are extremely massive bus bars. That's what your positive bus bar looks like. It's bolted directly to the circuit breaker. And then the other side of the circuit breaker, you have a connection there. 
two positive wires going to the positive side of the battery pack itself. Not really sure what that's for. That looks like it powers the communication board. So that has the communication plugs on it as well as the dry contact. More labeling on there as well. There's another board right here that has a little coin cell in it. So that might be for some flash memory and communication features, not really sure on that. More than likely, that's gonna be like your networking board to do, handle all the networking stuff. There's an antenna right there. That's gonna be for your antenna and your Bluetooth stuff. It says Wi-Fi, so that's the Wi-Fi antenna possibly. I believe that is fire suppressor. You have one there, you have another one there. And here's kind of a zoomed out look of what that all looks like again. Very nice. So it's pretty much exactly how we figured all the BMS communications, all the wiring and stuff is at the top there. And there's tons of room in this box, tons of breathing room. The BMS is also connected with a really nice, it has a very nice heat sink on the bottom. You can't really see it on the camera, but it does have that. Kind of wish they would have zip tied this up a little bit better. These are kind of loose. Now, as far as the wires coming out of the battery, these look like four gauge wires. So very, very heavy duty there. All right, let's take these off and take a look at the cells. You guys, always be careful when taking batteries apart. Don't recommend y'all do this at home. All right, so the bus bars they use look amazing. Very, very beefy laser welds there. The balance wires themselves are actually ran in the middle. So you have a balance harness here, you have a balance harness here, and then you have another one here. And then right here and right here, these are the temp sensors for the fire suppressors, which go all the way up to the top. So those two little rectangles I showed you guys up in the BMS box area are in fact the fire suppressors. I assume the heating pads are more than likely built either on the bottom or on the sides of the cells. And I'd have to take apart a lot more to get to those. So this is probably as much as we're gonna be able to see. The actual balance wires are actually welded. They're spot welded to the bus bars themselves. So that's a really robust design. The temp sensors, you have two here directly on bus bars. You have another one here, you have another one here, as well as you're gonna have a bunch of temp sensors built into the BMS itself. So tons of waste for the battery to monitor the temperature. You have these nice plastic little cell holders that kind of hold everything in place. And then the cells themselves, there's a giant metal bracket here and tons of bolts and screws that kind of hold it into the case. The case is all reinforced with metal bars and like boxed metal bars. Everything around the cells is extremely robust. And same thing, here's kind of a better top view looking straight down at the battery. Everything here looks amazing. They put a little bit of epoxy on the main positive, main negative terminals, which are gonna be right here. Here's that kind of wire I was talking about. It's a little bit loose. I kind of wish they would have zip tied this up a little bit. I don't like to see loose wires. At the same time though, once you set this battery up, you're never gonna move it. So it's probably not a big deal. But yeah, overall this thing looks amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap all the covers back on. I went ahead and put the battery fully back together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fully recharge the battery so we can do capacity test and see how this thing does. All right, so we got our EG4 314 amp hour wall mount battery completely fully recharged. I charge it till I hit the high voltage cutoff. We have it connected to the Sun Gold Power 48 volt single phase 5,000 watt inverter. We're gonna use this inverter to apply a 0.2C load on the battery. So 0.2C on this battery is gonna be about 62 amps. The closest I could get to 62 amps with my battery charger is 60. So we're just gonna run it at 60 and we're gonna see the final results. Should take about five hours to fully discharge this battery. All right, we just completed the capacity test on the EG4 314 amp hour wall mount indoor battery. And we got a total of 320.29 amp hours. And I basically ran the battery until the inverter completely shut down. So 320, that's pretty good. That's gonna wrap up my initial overview of the EG4 48 volt 314 amp hour wall mount battery. Now, who is this battery gonna be for? This is a very expensive battery. There's no doubt about that. However, this thing is feature packed. You do get the fire suppressors. It is also self-heated. It also has probably one of the best warranties you're gonna get on a battery, 10 years. It's also got all the listings that you're gonna need if you're gonna be installing this in a setup that requires specific UL listings. I would say this is a no compromise battery. Yes, it has a higher price tag, but you're gonna get your money's worth in my opinion. Very few batteries on the market are gonna guarantee their product for 10 years. And that alone might be worth the peace of mind that you're gonna get with a battery like this. Now having 16 kilowatt hours and just one battery is also really nice. So you can stack, you know, three, four, five of these and very easily be able to scale up your system. That with the built-in communication, you can have all the batteries talking to each other and talking to your main inverter. So you can have all the closed loop communication features that you could ever want. There's nothing this battery is really missing. The only con I think I could say is that it's heavy, but if you're buying a battery this size, you should already kind of know that you're getting into that. So the weight, I wouldn't even say is a really bad thing, but it is something to keep in mind when you're moving the battery, getting the battery set up. You do want to have two people to help you move the battery around. I've been wanting one of these batteries for years now, mainly because of all the things I just went over. So I'm very happy that I finally have one in my setup. I'm only going to have one for now. And honestly, that'll be plenty for what I got going on. Now in a future video, I have another large inverter coming for the channel that we're going to be messing with. And I'm going to be using this battery with that inverter and we're going to be building it on a power cart. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely look forward for that. We're going to be setting up communication. We're going to get all that working in that video as well. And as always, I will put links for everything down in the description. If you guys want to go check out this battery for yourself, I will recommend if you're going to 
buy a battery like this, buy it from a reputable distributor like Signature Solar. That way, if you do have any issues with the battery, you can go through them to help you have any warranty help, technical help, or anything like that. Those guys are really on top of it if you do need help or having any issues setting up your system. I'll leave all the links for that down in the description. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Please leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it, and I'll see you all in the next video.